Hello guys, how are you doing today? Today we have another lecture that is called True Priest. This is lecture number 14. And as you remember in our previous lecture, we, we checked in the scriptures why Jesus is our true and perfect King. So today we're going to see how he is our true and perfect priest, right? So uh, before starting, you know that we have to pray. So the Lord, uh, to be the Lord who is guiding us, okay? So please close your eyes. Father, we want to thank you in this moment. I want to thank you for the life of every child who is watching this, for the life of their families and their parents, Lord. I ask you, Lord, in this moment for your Holy Spirit to be guiding us. Um, we want to, to thank you, Lord, for everything that you have given us, for this precious faith and that comes from you, and for, your, for the gift of your Holy Spirit. We want to serve you, Lord. Here we are to, to worship you, to glorify your name, and to share about you in every place where we are, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to fill our hearts with, with your understanding, with your wisdom every day. I thank you, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, whom is the Christ. Amen. So, guys, this is lecture number 14, True Priest. We're going to start this lecture by defining what is a priest. A priest was a person appointed by God to fulfill a job. His job was to be before God, to offer a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins in representation of the people. So, God raised this job to give him worship and to resolve the problem of sin. The Pentateuch, it means the first five books of the Bible, or the five books of the law of God, records concerning mostly priests. The patriarchs, Adam, Noah, Abraham, offered personal sacrifices even before this job was raised by God. And after that, in the book of Exodus, God chose Aaron and his sons to be priests of the nation. But now let's see what was a priest's work. As we said before, they were in charge of offering sacrifice. They were like mediators between God and people. Do you remember that we have said in our previous lectures that God is holy, so he cannot be in the presence of sin? Well, that's why only priests could be in the presence of God, and they needed to offer sacrifices in the representation of the people. So, as you can see, priests had big responsibilities, because they served, and they were chosen by God. And let's see at what Numbers chapter 16 verse 40 says about this. As the Lord directed him through Moses. This was to remind the Israelites that no one except a descendant of Aaron should come to burn incense before the Lord, or he will become like Korah and his followers. They also used to teach the law of God, and we can also see in Numbers chapter 6 verses 22 to 27 that they were like leaders for Israel. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Said to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Nevertheless, they were not perfect. They were men, so they were sinners, and they also needed to offer sacrifice for themselves. As we can read in Malachi chapter 2, verse 7, they were supposed to preserve knowledge and to instruct people in the Lord. Instead, they were corrupted and they ruled by their own authority and not God's. Just as we can see in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31. So, 
All this situation only shows us the need for a true and perfect priest that we had. A true and perfect priest who solves the problem of sin once, eternally and perfectly. So we see by the scriptures that the Christ was the only one who took charge of this problem in the cross. And now let's see in the scriptures a comparison between earthly priests and Christ. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 27 to 28 says, Unlike the other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints a high priest men in all their weakness. But the oath which came after the law appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. Something we already know about Jesus is that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So he has no sins, that's why he didn't need to offer sacrifice for himself. Instead, he offered his own body as a perfect sacrifice and that gave us eternal redemption before our eternal Father and thanks to that, now for us who are in Christ there is no condemnation because now we live through the law of the Spirit who gives life and has set us free from the law of sin and death. Okay guys, now a reflection to finish this lecture. If the blood of goats and bulls sprinkled on those who are unclean, sanctify them Can you imagine how much more will the blood of Christ, the Son of God, who offered himself unblemished, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death, so that we may serve the living God? Wow, it is amazing, isn't it? Finally, I leave you the biblical quote so you can read this verse and go deeper on it. Okay guys, that was lecture 14. Now you know why Jesus is our true and perfect priest and we no longer need to do sacrifices, right? Because he already uh, fulfilled everything in the cross. So before finishing, we are going to have a prayer to thank God for all that he has done, right? For us. Okay, so close your eyes, please. Uh, Father, we want to thank you because it is you, Lord, who is revealing us the Christ through your scriptures. Thank you because as we learn today, it was you who has given all of your blood, all of, your, all of you, Lord, for us to forgive us and as a ransom for our sins. Uh, thank you, Lord, because we know that it is you who allows us to be here before you. And we know that we belong to you. We want to glorify your name. And thank you, Lord, because there are no words to express how thankful we are in our hearts, Lord. That's why we want to give all of our lives to, to proclaim about your name, to proclaim your gospel and to share this with our friends, with our families, with our parents, with our brothers and with our siblings, Lord. Thank you because um, you are good. You are very, very good. And you are rich in love to us, Lord. I thank you in the precious name of Jesus, who is our true King, our true priest and our true prophet. Amen. So guys, see you next time.